agent or any person buy a home in this market? You'd have to be absolutely crazy, right? Well, I'm going to break down why I just bought a new personal residence in this market, even with interest rates between 6.5 and 6.7%. Why it made sense for me and why if you're looking to make a move at this time as well, or you have to make a move, there are deals out there to be had. And especially in the new construction area here in Dallas, there's lots going on. But what I want to do is break down why I chose to buy right now in this market with interest rates so high. And if you stick around till the end, I'll even share with you how I'm not only going to get my current house and my new house paid for for free and still make money even in this market. How is that even possible? Let's jump into the numbers. By the way, my name is Levi, and if this is your first time to the channel, we discuss everything about Dallas, Texas, and if you want to be the first to know about the current market, make sure you subscribe below and tap the bell for notifications. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and leave a comment below. Once I run through this scenario, I want to hear your opinion. Do you think this could be a good option? Do you think this is a good option? And could this be an option for yourself? And have you ever seen anything broken down like this before? But before we do that, let me tell you a little story. So the house I'm currently in, I live in an area called Old East Dallas, which I absolutely love. 100 plus year old homes, historic district. It's really my vibe. I love it. I bought this home in 2019 at a 5% interest rate. And at the time, 5% was amazing. It was one of the best rates we had ever seen. Didn't even blink an eye at that, but I knew I had a good deal whenever I saw this house. Plus the room I'm in right now was a shed. Nothing was in here, completely hollowed out. But as soon as I saw this, I said, this could be a really nice Airbnb, which is what I envisioned turning this into. And I did. So as soon as I moved in, I immediately started construction and converting this into a one bedroom, one bath. This is 200 square square feet. You can see there's a bathroom right behind me where we added a beautiful shower, you know, toilet sink, of course, and completely renovated this space. So for the last three and a half to four years that I've been here, this Airbnb has paid the mortgage on my house. It's covered the entire thing, not including taxes though, but it has included all the principal and interest on there. Now that opportunity has allowed me to not have to worry about that. And this Airbnb has stayed booked out pretty much 95% of the time, anytime I had it up there, which I've had it up the whole time. It wasn't recent until I converted this into the studio about two months ago, but now I saw this new opportunity on a new construction house. And especially with the incentives going on with builders, I knew I needed to act because I thought this would be the absolute best time for me to move into a new residence, something that I've been thinking about doing anyways, but it was just waiting for the right time for me personally. So what I plan to do now is show you exactly how I was able to get my mortgage on this secondary home for only 5% down. And here's the other situation with this home. I bought this on a VA loan. Most of you know, I'm a veteran served in combat in Iraq back in 2005. And the thing is, is I got a VA loan zero down and 5% was great at the time. But you know, during the last two years, when rates really dropped, I was able to refinance this home at 2.25%. So I wanted to use my VA loan on the new home, which by the way, you can have two VA loans, but it does depend on what you're allotted for the the credit to be able to use that on the second home. You may not be able to get the second home with 100% zero down, okay? So that was what I was looking at. I wanted to get a VA loan and keep the VA loan on this home and the 2.25%. I didn't want to lose out on that because I had used zero down on this home. The VA was not going to allow me to do that. They were going to require me to put down about $120,000 if I wanted to use a second VA loan. That was not something I wanted to do. I wanted to put down as little as possible. So I had to reach out to my good friend, Brian McCauley over at Fairway Mortgage, our preferred mortgage partner here in Dallas and let him run some numbers for me. And he was like, Levi, no problem. We're going to do two loans on the second house and you're only going to have to put 5% down. Now the builder required a $40,000 down payment, but whenever Brian ran all the numbers, he was like, look, you may only have to come out of pocket another $5,000. And I thought $45,000 on a close to a million dollar property out of my pocket, not too bad, but what's my payment? What's going to be the rate? Those are the other questions I had, but I'm going to show you the exact email that Brian sent me to break this down and why I chose to move forward and how I'm going to pay for that house and this house and still make money every single month. So if you look here, what you're going to see is this is the exact email Brian sent me. He said, Levi, purchase price 885. Now here's the deal. 
the builder was offering forty thousand dollars in incentives and this is in winsong ranch if you haven't seen our videos on winsong ranch you should check those out because it's my favorite neighborhood up in north dallas it's in prosper just north of frisco it has absolutely everything in there the blue lagoon world-class gym lap pools play you know everything and for me this is the time to make that move so the builder offering forty thousand dollars incentives i let brian know that so he was like man this is going to be a great deal let me break this down so if you look at this he said we're going to amend the price up the original price of that home was 885 with 40,000 off was going to bring it to 845 now most people would look at that and say oh 40,000 dollars off of my house i would love that but the thing is is that that doesn't really make a big difference on the monthly payment you want to look at possibly buy downs closing costs and other things that you can move that money towards that would offer you a better incentive and that's exactly what we did here so he says purchase price 885 with 5% down combination loan no escrows using 30k for buy down and 40k in earnest money towards cash to close he said you'll need to have them amend this contract up to 885 move the 30k into seller paid closing costs also see second attachment page 22 okay and then we're going to talk about title costs so here's what he's going to do and as well as keeping me out of a jumbo loan this is going to be a 5% down conventional loan actually 5% down on uh, two conventional loans so have you ever heard of that or has anybody ever talked to you about that that's the opportunity right here. So he says, first lane, we're gonna do it 708,000. Second lane, 132,000, all right? Natural rate on the first lane, 6.75%. That's the current rate. And that's where most people would say, I'm out. I'm not paying 6.75%, but watch what we're going to do. As we discussed, we're gonna do the two one rate buy down year one that's going to drop the interest rate to 4.75 for the first lien so the payment's going to be 36.93 second lien is going to be 882 total so my first year total payment is going to be 845.75 that's well within the budget because initially whenever i looked at this and i ran my agent numbers versus having my mortgage broker do it for me i was thinking it was going to be around six thousand dollars and i was not really comfortable with that per month but 45.75 that I'm a lot more comfortable. So here's what's going to happen in year two. The rate's gonna go up to 5.75%. So that's gonna bump up the payment to 4131, second one, 882, and then right here, 5013. So in the second year, payment's gonna go to 5013. However, I know that rates will likely come down in the next year or two, somewhere in there. I mean, we can't predict that. Now with what's going on, they may even go up higher, but I'm presuming within the next one to two years, rates will drop, I'll refund finance it won't be that big of a deal and I'll probably be able to refinance down to a four and a half anyways somewhere around there permanently so I'm not concerned about that but it's the monthly payment that most people have to look at and I want to break this down a little bit more so what he's saying is that look this is all I'm going to need is cash to close 44,250 that's the five percent well I've already put forty thousand dollars down and we're going to use thirty thousand of that towards seller credits the two one buy down for eighteen thousand remaining closing costs eighty nine hundred so I'm going to have all of that taken care of and what he says is we'll need about three thousand left over depending on the title policy so if the builder picks that up then I'm not going to have to pay that three thousand but if the builder doesn't pick up the title policy then I have still that room to work left over so actual true cash to close will only be 4250 which is the difference of the five percent required versus the 40 percent down so there you can see how brian broke all of this down but now you may be thinking okay well how are you going to get two homes for free well i'm going to pull up the sheet and show you exactly what i plan to do how I have this all calculated out and how I'm actually going to net probably $1,200 a month. All right, here, so I broke this down very simply in a spreadsheet so you could see. Now my old East Dallas home mortgage is gonna be $2,600. That includes principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, okay? Everything in there for about 2,600. Now the Winsong Ranch mortgage is gonna be about 4,575 we saw in the first year. So that total is going to be $7,175 per month. Now, as I turn this home, because I will keep this home as an Airbnb, Airbnb because I'm close to downtown, close to Greenville Avenue. By the way, we got a video on the M streets, you know, around there as well, close to Henderson, everything I need. Now I say the back shed because I've rented this out consistently over the last three and a half to four years at $1,800 a month, every single month. So I don't expect that to change much at all. The main house I'm calculating because I have two bedrooms, two baths, and I'll include two recliner chairs.
chairs, sofas as well. So this will sleep six, I believe, or actually I know that I'll be able to average around $300 a night and I calculate for about 22 nights a month, leaving eight days open for vacancy, give or take. Now here again in the shed, I've been booked usually 95 to 98% of the time. So this could even be better, but conservatively, I expect to earn about $6,600 from the main house and I will Airbnb them separately because it's two different people. This is just a couple that will probably be a small family and total that will be $8,400 in income. So you can see Airbnb income will be around $8,400, two mortgages together about $7,175. So the difference is, is I will be netting around $1,225 a month. So I will have two houses for free, basically getting paid to have two houses. Now, even in the second year, if I don't refinance in that first year and my payment goes up $500, I still have $700 of net that I can make from this scenario. And so a good friend of mine, Pace, told me that it's never the price of an asset. It's what you can do with the asset or what you can get in return from the asset or what you can cash flow with the asset or what you can get in appreciation from the asset. So that's what I wanted to share with you today is that it really comes down to a math problem. This is a harder concept for most first time home buyers or brand new couples in the market. They don't see this as a math problem. They see this more as an emotional decision that something that feels good to them. But the reality is, is that we ask that you just give us a call. If you're thinking about buying a home in this market or even selling, and you're not sure what to do about where you're going to move to, or you have to move because here in Dallas, we are in a great relocation market where corporations and companies are moving here every single day to get out of these other states that are more restrictive because Dallas is such a great area for being business friendly, tax friendly, and freedom friendly. You know, some people have to move here and they don't want to rent. They want to buy a home. Or if this is just something you're tossing around, what I recommend is you give us a call so that we can talk through your situation, find out what's going on in your life. And that way we can better understand if this is a right time for you. But I promise we can find a deal in any market and people buy and sell homes in every market up, down or sideways. It doesn't matter. And even someone like myself, who's an agent, boots on the ground in this every single day, I saw an opportunity. I thought this was a great opportunity to buy in Winsong Ranch. Last year, you could not get anything under a million in Winsong Ranch. And I think we're going to be headed that direction again in the next few months here in Winsong Ranch. So to find something below 900,000 and I got a brand new Southgate home, four bedroom, four and a half bath, 3,500 square feet. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And again, everything's going to be paid for through the Airbnb. Now you may not be that ambitious. Maybe you don't want to have Airbnb, but these are things that we have to talk to to find out what may fit you, your personality and your family and what's the best fit. That's why we say, Hey, just give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email or even schedule a zoom call. All of that information is in the description below low. And whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, feel free to reach out because we are happy to help you make a smooth move here to Dallas. So until next time, we hope to show you around town.